It's a new year and more often than not, people get to talk about and make resolutions. And so couples do. I mean, it does happen. It happens everywhere to together have, uh, you know, a joint reason to go into the year. Well, today we have Miracle Ihoma and we're looking at New Year's resolutions for couples. It is great to have you. Happy yeah, New Year. It's good. Happy New Year. It's good. You're welcome. Yeah, All you. right. So, uh, okay, now we know that as couples, you can come together to make resolutions. How important is it, first of all, or is it, is it, is it optimal that couples come together as a group? Because sometimes people tell that resolutions are supposed to be individual. Mm. But then as, as a couples, how, how important is it that couples make resolutions together? Okay. Um, first of all, I'm more of a fan of setting um, achievable goals than just okay. making resolutions because okay. the issue of resolutions, like we all know, is the fact that many times they are not sustainable. So right now, you have a lot of people who have resolutions for the new year. Oh, I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to start doing this. Now, there's no problem with that because resolution is a decision to do something or stop doing something. The issue usually is the system or structures people put around those resolutions to make them happen. So the same thing for couples. You know, if you're going to set resolutions or if you're going to um, come up with resolutions, I'd rather you convert those resolutions to goals, achievable specific measurable goals you know that you can achieve as couples and as a family now that is very important because if you can set goals as an individual if organizations can set goals then i believe that families and couples should set goals as well what kind of because, goals are we looking at how what, what kind of goals give us an example yes so there are many areas couples can set goals in um I, they can set goals in um, your physical health and vitality. You can have physical health and vitality goals. You can have spiritual goals as a, as a, as a couple. You can have um, recreation, you know, as a couple. Um, you can have goals around family, in-laws, children, if you have children, to say, okay, these are the kind of schools, for instance. These are the kind of places I want to take our children to. This is how we want to relate with our in-laws. You can have goals. You can have personal development goals. You can say, okay, as a couple, we are going to read these books together. We are going to attend this training together. We are going to attend these seminars together, you know, this particular year. We can set goals, you know, in communication. Okay, last year, we didn't do well with communication. Can we set goals around communication? So, okay, what are the issues that we had? Can we begin to um, make, you know, those adjustments? How many times do you want us to talk a day? Do you like me to send you text messages? So we can set those kind of goals and then put timelines and stuff around them. These goals, are, are, do you really recommend that couples should set goals like this at the beginning of the year? Yes, I do. Fully, you fully recommend that? I do recommend that couples set goals because mm. when you set goals, a lot of the times when we, when we set goals, then we have something that we are looking towards and something that drives us. That's something with, with, with goals. If you don't have goals, you're just, you know, living your life to chance in that sense. But when you have goals, we know that there's something we are working towards. You know, financial goals is something I didn't mention, for instance. You can yeah. say, okay, this year, these are the things we want to achieve financially that's at it, that's the a end couple. of the year as a couple. The end of the year. And then, you know, pursue those goals, you know, with those timelines. Oh, but, so how about, how, about, how about when you get to the point where uh, uh, you cannot keep to those goals? I know that because you're a couple now, maybe uh, one you can require or you can accountability from the other couple. How do you make, uh, how do couples hold themselves accountable, you know? without involving te third parties or how do they you know ensure that they keep to these goals yes that's a very beautiful question because that's something i was going to um, talk about at some point um the issue of accountability because that's why a lot of people don't achieve their goals they are the only ones who know about the goals you know so it's when you are the only one who knows that i'm supposed to do this then if you don't do it there is really nobody you know calling calling you or to check, check up on you wow. or to keep you accountable on those goals. But when you have somebody, you know, um, who is keeping you accountable, you know that, okay, I have to report to this person. This person was going to ask me about this. And even though you don't, you know, have it that the person would ask you, the person would eventually ask you, how far will this go? Then it can jolt you, jolt you back to, to reality. So this brings um, us to the yeah. case of your yeah, personal ones now. When, how do you, uh, how can you set up an accountability system? Yes. Personally. Yes. As a couple, but I'm talking now as a person. As a person, when it seems like you, like you mentioned, when you are only accountable to yourself, and you know, even if you write it down, it's not like you carry that paper. Of course, some people now go online on social media and say, "Look, I want to, I want 
in quotes, I want the world to hold me accountable, which in some ways has helped some people because maybe some people keep tabs. But like you said, if I wrote this thing in my book, it's my diary, it's my personal stuff. I'm the only one that sees it. I don't keep to it. Nobody comes and says, hey, maybe after you understand. Yeah. As a person in a relationship or wherever, as an individual, how do you hold yourself accountable? How? That's why you Is get, it really feasible? Can you really hold yourself accountable? You get somebody else to hold you accountable. Now, you even have in relationships, mm. I tell people, third party is not a bad thing. So maybe a lot of people will say, oh, I don't want third party in my relationship. No, third party is not a bad thing. In fact, every relationship requires a third party. Only that there are rules surrounding third parties. Mm. Number one, it must really be third party, not third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh party. Number two, it must be somebody who has experience, who is more knowledgeable, and maybe has some expertise in that particular area. Right? So when you have somebody who is more experienced and knowledgeable in that area, then it makes sense for that person to keep you accountable. Right? Because that's really, because without accountability, a lot of us will not achieve our goals. Without accountability, we would in fact go into excesses in relationships and marriage. The reason why there are a lot of excesses, abuse, and things like that is because a lot of the couples or the individuals in that marriage know that nobody's holding me accountable. I can do whatever I like you know, at any point in time. Mm. So accountability helps to keep us in check, you know, at every point in time. So as an individual, it's important that you get somebody who you trust, somebody who you trust their judgment, who you feel is more knowledgeable and experienced than you are to keep you accountable on those goals. Sometimes it might never be somebody who is more experienced. It can be your friend to say, okay, I've set these goals. Please hold me accountable. I want to achieve this by March 2024. I want you to keep me accountable on these goals and then go ahead to, to do that. Okay, and then, okay, now we're talking about when you fail and all of that. Does it have to be, now the problem with novel might have is that, does it have to be at the beginning of the year? If you don't fail, if you don't, if you fail to keep those goals, do you set new ones? Do you stand back up and go back to the old ones and pick up from there? How do you move forward after maybe you have fallen by the way a few, one or a few times? Yeah, yeah, the reason why, of course, we set goals at the beginning of the year is because you have, there's a frenzy of the new year. You know that, okay, we, this is like the beginning, a fresh start, right? We are starting all over again. So it gives people the opportunity to say, okay, even if I didn't do well last year, at least I can have a fresh start, I can do better this year. And that's why we encourage people to set goals at the beginning of the year. Of the year. However, you can review your goals as the year goes, it goes on. To say, okay, you know what, these goals, I don't think, and that's why it's important that, of course, I'm sure you've heard about SMART in terms of how, how we set goals. Mm. That's why your goals must be SMART. They must be, they must be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound, right? So when they have those qualities, most times it, there will be something or things that you can achieve. However, if you can achieve them, you have the right to, of course, review these goals and say, you know what, Let's be strategized because when the going gets tough, like, like you know, someone rightly posits, he said the tough gets going. But sometimes I usually like to say that when the going gets tough, the tough needs to stop because he might just miss his way, right? <laughs> so when the going gets right. tough, sometimes he needs to stop and then re strategize and ask himself, okay. what can I do better to actually keep going? Thank you very much, Miracle. We're looking forward to the rest of what you have to see the rest of this month. Thank you. Bro. All right. Okay, let's head over to the kitchen now and see how far they are going with the goals of getting breakfast for us this morning. <laughs>